Hey everyone, Black Octagon here from the Overlord forums. Finally, after many many months of waiting, we're finally going to do an in-depth review of the long-awaited Overlord Tempest X270 OC. <sighs> I've been tracking these monitors for quite a while, um, and on 18th of December finally got my hands on a pixel-perfect version of the OC, um, which ended up costing me not that much. Uh, in euros, where I live uh, in Belgium, total cost including all the shipping, the monitor, the import duties, the taxes, such as they were, came to about a total of 15, uh, 515 euros, which is slightly less than the Samsung 950D monitor that I already had, which was inferior in many, many ways. Um, so very, very exciting. and. I'm resisting the urge as much as possible to just dive in and game with this thing because I thought for the benefit of you all we should do a proper review. Um, what I'm going to do in part one in fact is go through a little bit of the history about why so many people are excited about these things. Um, a lot of people come in sort of late in the game, they know there's something awesome about these monitors, but if they haven't been here since the beginning, it's kind of hard to know uh, what all the fuss is about. I wasn't there at the beginning, but I've uh, been following it quite closely since uh, about the middle of the year. And so I'm going to sort of take you through um, how it is that we are now today looking at a monitor like this and what the big deal is about. So. Feel free to skip ahead if you're familiar with all this, but if you're new to the game and want to understand a little bit better um, what we're doing, please read on. So it basically started last year, uh, late 2011, as I understand. A bunch of um, monitors um, available on eBay suddenly became very, very um, popular. Uh, in particular was the uh, Yamakaze Cat Leap that you see here, uh, in particular sold by Greensum and some other eBay sellers, um, which uh, were very, very affordable. I mean, other monitors exist um, that have a high resolution to 2560 by 1440, 27 inches, IPS panels, very, very attractive, but usually they were very, very expensive if you get them from Dell or Apple or, and, and so on. So this particular screenshot's from today, but Back when this all started, they were going for as little as 400 US dollars, which was an incredible deal, and everyone was jumping on them, um, even though they weren't as quite as finely polished as the Dells and Apples, the, the, the simple attraction was, was really quite there, and they were starting to get a lot of attention. Um, the, the Cat Leap in particular um, is mainly sold in Korea um, beforehand <coughs> by the WeTech company. Um, but Greensum, this eBay seller, had the exclusive rights to sell it um, internationally, and many other people do it as well. But um, this one in particular became very, very popular. But there are others as well, the Achiever Shimian, the Crossover, the Battalion, uh, and more recently new ones like the Nixius View. Um, but people were picking these up on eBay and uh, starting to th have a good look at them, use them for all sorts of things. Um, Greensum still sells these. As you see, the price has gone up quite a lot. The last one you were looking at was slightly more expensive, uh, $559, because it was a pixel-perfect version. <clears throat> but you can get the non-pixel-perfect version still for $520 uh, off their Buy to Korea site. Um, and as I said, it's an official monitor made by WeTech Corporation, and this is a screenshot from their um, official page on their website. But made by a um, you know, established company, and um, was only ever intended to to do the things you see here. You know, be a 1440p monitor, be an IPS display uh, operating over dual link DVI, and it was only ever intended to run at 60 hertz. However, apparently by sheer accident, people started to realize that there was a, a certain batch of cat leap monitors that could be overclocked. Um, the, they came with the following printed circuit board that you're seeing had these little nifty features that I don't personally pretend to understand, but people figured out that with if you had a cat leap with this particular um, uh, PCB, um, called popularly, popularly called the 2B PCB because it was made in February, um, you could actually overclock with the right hardware, software, and hacks 
Um, this monitor, which already had the cool combination of being a cheap 27-inch IPS monitor, but also get it up beyond that 60 hertz to 120, which, as far as uh, gaming is concerned, is hugely attractive. Um, native 120 hertz screens do, of course, exist, but not um, IPS screens in this size and resolution. Um, uh, so the massive advantage is you get the... Um, incredible color accuracy and viewing angles that an IPS display gives at this high resolution, but also with the extra, significantly extra smoothness that comes at 120 hertz. Um, and so still at this low, low price back then of around 400 US dollars, people start to get very, very excited indeed. Um, and Scrooby the Great, who we all know as the founder of Overlord now, was the first one to actually start the Cat Leap Monitor Club over on Overclock.net, um, a, a club that's still there and is still alive and kicking. You know, they're up to page what, 923, over 9,000 posts are made. Um, the opening post that Scrooby did back in um, back in March it still contains a huge amount of uh, uh, useful information about what people were um, figuring out about these monitors at the time, although he himself is no longer posting it there anymore, and some of the information is starting to get out of date. But this is what happened. People basically got together on overclock.net and were actively discussing these monitors, but in particular, how to get an overclockable one. Came very, very... Um, almost like a kind of uh, gamer's uh, sort of cult to hunt these things down because there was only very specific batch that could be overclocked and um, you know the process was a little bit um, involved and you know if you could get one at the good price and get one without defects um, you pretty much had what people called the holy grail of gaming monitors and so the demand for these things as awareness has gone up has become bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, for a variety of reasons that we won't get into, um, the situation at overclock.net was no longer uh, uh, working out very well. So Scribby, together with another member, Hypermatrix, set up their own website, forum, web shop called 120hertz.net. And the sole purpose of this, apart from providing a forum, was to source versions of the Cat Leap 2B. Um, so the Cat Leap monitors that had the overclockable PCB and sell them directly to the community. Um, and, and Hypermatrix is still doing that over here. He's doing a great job. Um, apparently, it's a bit of a struggle to get some, you know, reliable and regular batches of these things. But they do come directly from WeTech uh, in certain quantities. Unfortunately, these days, the prices has gone up way, way, way beyond 400 US dollars just because of the demand, uh, I, I assume. Like today, you buy a standard model for seven hundred and nineteen uh, dollars with shipping. Eight hundred and nineteen for Pixel Perfect. It's still cheaper than an Apple Cinema Display or a Dell, um, which, which are of course only sixty hertz, but um, it's not as uh, cheap as it was once was. But still, very much worth it. And um, you, you know, one hundred and twenty hertz dot net is still an excellent site. I personally am on there all the time, um, but it is more or less devoted solely to the um, Cat Leap 2B. Um, so Hyper and Scrooby set up this uh, website um, to provide the 2B monitor, but of course there was also another uh, reason for this. The amount of monitors that had the overclockable PCB were still very limited in number. It wasn't clear entirely. Um, whether they were going to continue being available forever. And one of the ongoing projects that Scrooby had and still has is to actually try and find a way to produce these PCBs himself for the community to ensure supply, um, maybe make some good business on the side, but basically reverse engineer the PCBs in the cat leap so that future monitors can continue to benefit from this awesome combination of 120 hertz uh, thereabouts um, together with all the wonderful features of IPS. Um, Scrooby's no longer on 120hertz.net uh, but his, his profile has been renamed as just 120hertz.net but you can find all his threads that he started in his posts. There's still a huge amount of very useful information on there. 
but now he's basically uh, devoted full time to his own business, uh, Overlord Computer, um, which is different to 120Hertz.net because Overlord doesn't sell the cat leap, it sells its own uh, computers, um, uh, computer monitors, uh, using similar but sometimes different parts. Not just overclockable uh, monitors, of course, but the big thing is it does sell the Tempest X27OC, which at the moment contains the same overclockable PCB that was found in the Cat Leap 2B. And uh, hopefully one day will contain PCBs uh, reverse engineered and manufactured and supplied by Overlord themselves. So we will have this continuity of supply and a good amount of healthy competition uh, between WeTech, which is a Korean company, uh, and a United States manufacturer. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about the Tempest I received in the next part of the review, but that's how we came to where we are today. And Overlord, of course, is on Facebook and, uh, as you probably know, has a forum as well. And the man behind it all, Scooby the Great, uh, is out there on the internet. As you can see, he's an ugly, ugly motherfucker. Um, and for reasons you can all understand, decided to get a sex change to become a hot chick. But it left him kind of twisted and sideways, but still a vast improvement over what he was before. We won't hold it against him that he's a freak, of course, because he gives us the monitors that we are loving. And... Uh, Thank you, Scooby, for everything you've done, and uh, continue to be good, otherwise you'll go down in history as an asshole. Huh? <laughs> so here we are, back to the monitor. That's the history. That's the history of how we got from um, uh, sort of cult monitors on eBay about a year ago to now, the end of 2012, where we have a special monitor designed specifically for us in the uh, overclocking community. 120 hertz on a 27-inch IPS screen, all the smoothness of 120 hertz screen for gaming with the color reproduction of IPS, with the viewing angles, with the high resolution, it is something, it is a combination of factors that you cannot get from pretty much any other, um, uh, you know, monitors by the big manufacturers out there and we are very, very excited. So I'm going to tell you in part two a little bit more about the specific monitor I received starting uh, with just some basic pictures of what I received in the box, how the monitor looks and everything, and then we'll get more and more into specifics. Okay, so see you in the next part.